BBOR Black Box Online Radio coming to you from West Virginia. Black Box Ned eighty eight on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And just a quick reminder, every Monday is Zodiac Mondays. Wednesday is an Ask Me Anything. That's an AMA, so please drop your questions below for things that you would like discussed here on the show. And Friday is an Anything Goes. Any subject is fair game, mostly talking about true crime, serial killers, the Zodiac Killer, but any subject is welcome. All right, so please share some ideas in the comment section about what you would like to hear about on this channel, and let's get started. This episode of Black Box Online Radio is brought to you by McFarland Books, a great place to explore the true crime world and to learn more about the human experience. Their titles cover subjects ranging from the stories of law enforcement to the unsolved crimes of South Florida. Please visit McFarlandBooks.com for more. Okay, hello everybody. Today is Monday. Another Zodiac Monday. Welcome to the show. First, I would like to give another big shout out to McFarlane Books. And on Friday, for the Anything Goes Friday segment, I will do an episode about the Miami Strangler. That is some material that I learned about from the Flat Tire Murders by Michael P. Burns. And that is a McFarlane Books publication. But today, to talk about the Zodiac Killer, first I have to go to a message that was sent to me by Alex, and anybody can write the show at blackboxonlineradio at aol.com. You can also get me on Facebook. My personal Facebook is in the description box. And, of course, the Instagram page, blackboxnid88. And the message goes, Hey, Ned, my name is Alex. I've been listening to you for about three to four weeks now. I have two questions. Both are speculative. Number one, Have you ever considered that if the Zodiac is still alive, possible age-wise, that he's seen one of your videos or a video you were featured in? Number two, we know that the Zodiac made phone calls after the Blue Rock Springs crime and the Lake Berryessa stabbing. Do you think it's possible when he was walking away from Stein's cab that his intention was to go to a phone booth and make another call? This plan was obviously... This plan obviously would have been spoiled by Falk coming across the Zodiac if that really happened, which I tend to believe it did. I'm sure in 1969 there were a bunch of phone booths in the vicinity of a wealthy neighborhood. Just two thoughts that I had. All right, so I'm going to go to the second question first. So we know that the Zodiac killer um, firstly committed the Lake Herman Road murders December 20th of 1968. Then there was no phone call after that one, no letters either. Then the Zodiac commits the Blue Rock Springs shooting on July 4th of 1969, and Darlene Farron died in that one. Mike Majot survived. Then the Zodiac killer, or someone, an active participant in some theories, whoever was involved with this, made the phone call at 12.40 a.m. Darlene Farron was pronounced dead at 12.38 a.m., and the call comes in at 12.40 a.m. Some people think that well, this person is just hanging out by the hospital, that they knew what was going on, and other people think that that is a pure coincidence. Then, after the Lake Berryessa stabbing on September 27th of 1969, the Zodiac Killer also made a phone call. Now, what happened after the Stein shooting? What was the intention of the Zodiac Killer? Because the final confirmed Zodiac crime is on October 11th of 1969, and the Zodiac Killer murdered Paul Stein, the taxi driver, the only time a single man was targeted, the only time a single person was targeted, and the rest of them have been lover's lanes that the Zodiac went after. There were lover's lane murders. There was a man and a woman present. Lake Herman Road, Blue Rock Springs, and Lake Berryessa. With the Stein murder, the Zodiac operated in a taxi cab inside of the vehicle as opposed to getting the victims to um, possibly come out of the car at Lake Herman Road, or the Zodiac didn't enter the car at Blue Rock Springs to the best of our knowledge. He approached the car window and fired the bullets into there, shooting Mike Majot and Darlene Farron. And at Lake Berryessa, the uh, victims were already outside of the car, and the Zodiac actually had to walk somewhere between three and 500 meters from 
uh, where Brian Hartnell's uh, car was to the picnic blanket, first making that walk down one way, and then after the victims were stabbed, the Zodiac returned, found Brian Hartnell's Carmen Gia, and wrote a message on it, saying, um, firstly, the Zodiac symbol, the word Vallejo, the dates of Zodiac activity, and by knife. What happened after the Stein shooting? October 11th, 1969, Paul Stein is shot in the back of a taxi cab. And did the Zodiac plan to make a phone call? Do you think it's possible that when he was walking away from Stein's cab that his intention was to go to a phone booth and make another call? You know, Alex, you're the first person to ask me about that. And my, I, my immediate response was, I don't know. Then I began to think about it a little bit more. And I thought, no. That was the first thing I thought of. Because the Zodiac should have already had a piece of Paul Stein's shirt. To the people out there who entertain the single perpetrator theory or even variants of a group murder theory, they think that the piece of Paul Stein's shirt was cut and removed at the scene of the crime. So he knows that he's going to do something different. He's going to write a letter and mail in a piece of Paul Stein's bloody shirt. And I found that that would be something that would overtake the presence of a phone call. And the other reason why I thought that the Zodiac's intention was not to make a phone call after the Stein shooting was that this is the riskiest crime. Because even though the Zodiac committed the Lake Berryessa stabbing in the daylight, it's at roughly um, 6.30 p.m. when the stabbing concluded, thereabouts, maybe 6.20 and then walking to the car at 6.30 p.m., maybe thereabouts complete daylight, but no one is around. And I believe that Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard were targeted at Lake Berryessa because they were in a vulnerable place. And the person has kind of checked the area, doesn't see anyone in the general vicinity. But with the Stein murder, that type of planning could not have been foreseen. When I was um, reading an essay written by Mike Rodelli for this channel on the episode Shulk Zodiac Shel Cavale AMA, his suspect is named Shel Cavale, the Norwegian-American businessman. He did point out that the Zodiac most likely directed Paul Stein's taxi to a place where the trees would have covered the street lamps, so it would have been a little bit darker. But when I say unforeseen, the Zodiac could not foresee that someone else would be walking on a city street. The Zodiac could not be certain that there wouldn't be somebody like the Robbins kids popping their heads up in a window and taking a look, that was perhaps the riskiest crime. So if that is the case, what is the ambition of the Zodiac killer to get away, to get out of there? I believe when I was reading Zodiac Unmasked by Robert Graysmith, he proposed the idea that um, the Zodiac was um, trying to kind of navigate some alleyways so he could get to a car that he had stashed, or parked rather than stashed. He had parked a car there previously, and he wanted to get into his car and drive away. Other people pointed out, though, that there were roadblocks that the police had set up, and that is an unlikely scenario. Some people think that the Zodiac walked into a building in, um, that he lived nearby, so he commits the Stein murder, walks into his home, maybe to destroy evidence, but... I don't believe that either. I think that um, the Zodiac was just able to evade capture because, number one, he was very lucky. Number two, the Zodiac was most likely a sociopath or a psychopath who showed absolute indifference to Paul Stein and was able to remain in a very calm and collected state after he had just murdered a man and he's moving Paul Stein's body around in the taxi cab, pushing Paul Stein to the floorboards, most likely, so he didn't get blood on his pants, and he wouldn't leave a dripping trail of blood, cuts off the piece of Paul Stein's shirt. And my hypothesis about that, that I've shared in the past, is the Zodiac may have been trying to emulate Jack the Ripper, not exactly an imitation, Jack the Ripper cutting out a victim's kidney and so on. Of course the Zodiac isn't going to do that in a taxi cab where he's just fired a gun let alone, I mean, all the attention that would have been drawn. And as we just said, could not foresee the witnesses, could not expect and anticipate who's going to be paying attention 
to the witnesses. The Zodiac couldn't anticipate something like that. Is there going to be somebody walking by at this exact moment? Is someone going to turn a light on from on their front porch at this exact moment? Is someone going to come out the door at that exact moment? Those types of details couldn't be incorporated into a plan. So that, no, the Zodiac isn't going to do something absolutely heinous and gruesome. And it's quite possible Jack the Ripper didn't even do all the things that they accused the Ripper of, like cutting out someone's kidney, um in a surgical manner because people don't perform surgery in near total darkness and alleyways when they don't even have street lamps. So what's he going to do? He cuts off a piece of Paul Stein's shirt and he tries to make a quick and stealthy exit. Um, no, I don't believe that a phone call was planned because the Zodiac had something different in store. The concept of changing the pattern of behaviors to evade capture because the Zodiac has committed three L L Lover's Lane shootings, Lake Herman Road, Blue Rock Springs, and really just two, Lake Herman Road and Blue Rock Springs. There was a stabbing at Lake Berryessa. There are three Lover's Lane attacks, two shootings, one stabbing. And at the Stein murder, the Zodiac is going to go to a different place. Oh, the police are watching the Lover's Lanes. They're expecting me to do that. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to murder Paul Stein, cut off a piece of his shirt. They're also expecting that the Zodiac is going to go to a nearby phone booth, perhaps, because phone calls did come after Blue Rock Springs and Lake Berryessa. It's not necessary now, because the Zodiac is going to take credit for his crimes in a different way, and to prove that he committed the crimes, mailing in pieces of Paul Stein's bloody shirt. So that's my long, twisted answer to that question. The next one is... D have you considered that this, if the Zodiac is still alive, age-wise, that he's seen one of your videos or video you were featured in? I'm also the host of the Zodiac Killer Channel's Interview with the Experts series. Maybe you're referring to that. All right, so the only Zodiac Killer suspect I've truly interacted with was Michael Henry O'Hare. He is the subject of the book Time 17, as well as Zodiac Killer Solved. And he, he said uh, one thing in his final message. He said, Good luck with the show. And I was like, I hope to piss that Michael O'Hare is not the Zodiac Killer, that he's just sitting back listening to every episode of Black Box Online Radio, eating his popcorn, and just like, <laughs> this guy, Ned, haha, -ha, he doesn't have a clue. Good luck with the show. I hope not. No, but um, I've definitely thought about that since I had that exchange with Michael O'Hare, that if the Zodiac were alive, I mean, especially if I had done a profile video on him. I mean, I recently did the episode on the Zodiac Killer suspect, Rodney Hamlin, who has um, passed away. But I've done, I began thinking more about that. Like if I, when I compose those suspect profile videos in that nature, when I'm talking about a single person, yeah, I've thought about that. But I, I guess there's no real way to know. Um... Instead, though, I get contacted more by people who say that they have a Zodiac Killer suspect or say that um, they have had some type of first-hand interaction with one of the people mentioned. I have to give a shout-out to someone whom I'll just call Colette, who says that she was the daughter of Richard Hoffman, the um, officer who responded after the Blue Rock Springs shooting. And I did a three-part series talking about Richard Hoffman as a Zodiac suspect, and Colette was very um, polite about everything. She said, yes, he was an investigator, or yes, he was a detective, an officer, but he most likely wasn't involved with the murders. I don't, I don't think that Richard Hoffman was involved with the murders, only for the fact that I can't see anything other than storytelling. Yes, he's at the scene of the crime at the Blue Rock Springs shooting. Yes, he um, is involved with uh, taking Darlene Fair into the hospital, Robert Graysmith also wrote that Darlene Farron and Richard Hoffman knew each other in his book Zodiac from 1986, saying that Richard Hoffman attended Darlene Farron's house painting party. But firstly, uh, Dean Farron, Darlene Farron's husband at the time, said that the painting party never happened. Secondly, Richard Hoffman denied that connection. He's like, why did Graysmith put that in his book? I didn't know Darlene Farron. And he said that in one of the uh, documentaries from 2007. But to get back to the question, do I think the Zodiac Killer has been watching this um, channel? 
I've thought about it, but I mean, probably not. No one has directly written me some type of suspicious message and something that would have been on par with a Zodiac letter. Um, other than that, good luck from Michael O'Hare. Uh, so if it, if they if they are, they're probably having that type of response that this guy Ned he'll never figure it out and. That perhaps goes as well for the interviews with the expert series on the Zodiac Killer channel. And I invite you to check out a lot of that their content. There are going to be all kinds of new things coming out in the next um, couple months on the Zodiac Killer channel. And I am also the host of Astro Psych 400. Some people were saying that they like to use this, um, this show as a way to fall asleep at night. So I thought, why not create a podcast for sleep on Astro Psych 400? That's my other channel. I did one episode on Black Box Online Radio, but it's now up and running on Astro Psych 400, Podcast for Sleep. If you would like to uh, use a program to help you fall asleep at night, I listen to audio every night when I go to sleep, other than the Blue Moon exception. And you can always go over to Amazon.com, have a look at the book Killer on a White Horse by me, Ned Dahan. It is a novel, murder mystery, inspired by the Zodiac Manson connection, but it is fictional. But who doesn't love a good mystery? Killer on a White Horse. And the link to that is in the description box, as well as the Teespring page. Feel free to have a look at some of the merchandise. And remember, being weird is not a crime. All right, well, that's all for me now. I will see you guys over on Instagram for the bonus podcast. And until next time.